How's it going guys? So today we are starting to dig out, getting ready for concrete. We've got a contractor coming to help us pour our concrete lane for a robot feeder. Which is gonna start in the feed room, head up this way to the freestall barn. The first thing they wanna pour though is the pad for our grain bins. It's gonna be right in between these two openings in the building. It's gonna be a thick layer of concrete to support the bins. We gotta get it down a little bit. While Dad's doing that, I'm gonna go check the corn a little bit, and then we got some other things to do later. I don't know how interesting all the crop scouting is for you guys, but we're past the main push of the spring crop work. All the spraying's done and everything. I can't drive in my fields anymore, which is nice. Um, this is a field of the brown midrib. It's the Bravant Unified Corn. This stuff is looking very nice. It's up over my head now. We've had just enough rain so far this summer. It's a little borderline dry, but not bad at all. Uh, this corn will shrivel up some this afternoon, but it's looking awesome. Calling for some good chances of rain later this week, so really hoping to see some more rain. This is probably one of the nicer sections, but it's nice to see some of it doing really well. We try not to stress about dry weather. We normally get the rain we need. Soybean fields are looking nice. Got some mare's tail right at the edge. Not seeing a lot of that in the field, but the reason we're worried about mare's tail is because Roundup will not kill this stuff. And we're growing the plenish soybeans, which they're just Roundup ready. We can't spray anything else like Liberty or uh, Enlist herbicide. We relied on our pre-emerge herbicides to stop the mare's tail, which it worked really well. Up here we got some corn that's not as pretty. That had some slug damage and yeah, I'm just not as impressed with it. At the other farm now. Wow. I did not realize this stuff would be tasseling already. Today's July the 3rd. Planted it the last week of April there. Probably could use some rain for this stuff. We planted some short season corn to get dry stuff for the bottom of our silos. So we never grew 93 day corn before. Some of it looks a little short, like right here it's only head high, tasseling, drier area. Dad got this to the point he's happy with it for now. Got the little rake out. We mowed our waterways the other day and we're gonna get them bailed this afternoon. So dad wants to rake that up. That robot lane is gonna come through here and meet up with the front of the dry cow. We decided we're not gonna try and save some of that old concrete there because it's not quite the right elevation and it's kind of wearing out. Just gonna pour new concrete down towards the heifer barn. Hey guys, so it's the next day. We got the neighbor out to bail these waterways yesterday. Just gonna clean these bales up before we get rain later today, hopefully. nine bales they're three by three by eight should be good enough grass so we can chop up and feed it to the heifers got it dry enough so that's good today's july 4th they were going to come tomorrow to start pouring concrete now they said they're going to be here monday
it's the next day now and the hay chopper actually was coming this morning so we got those bales already chopped up putting the wagon back in the barn just got the mess cleaned up a little bit we use this stuff mainly in the dry cow ration just kind of a filler it's a low quality grass we buy it from a neighbor well he's not super close by but call him a neighbor we also put some in the heifer ration and a little bit in the milk cows we like to chop it up like this that way they don't sort through it because our feed mixer won't process it nearly enough and then there'll be big pieces it doesn't cost a lot to get someone out to chop it like this it's very reasonable so we think it's definitely worth just getting it chopped up good this will last us over a month unfortunately we didn't get any rain last night there's still some chances the next couple days it doesn't look as strong but i'm really hoping we get something that pops up i'm in the utility room behind the milk house I gotta change our water filter up there. Try to do that about once a month. Just last year we put a, a light in right there to kill bacteria in the water for our main barn. We were finding a little bit of bacteria in the water out of our well, so we just decided to run everything through that. This main water line here is what comes out of the wells. We got one really good well, and then one not as good, and one that we're not using anymore. Uh, those run up to the filter and then back down here. So I just need to climb up there and change this filter. I gotta order more filters too, I'm on the last one. Before it goes through the light, they wanted to run it through a filter just to get any particles out of the water. Yeah, it's a five micron filter. So this gets plugged up with some metals that are in the water. It starts to restrict the flow after a little bit, so I need to keep it changed. I don't know what that exactly is, but some sort of metal that's like a rust looking stuff. The water looks clear coming through before it even goes through this filter, but it builds up in here pretty bad. Put the water back in, hold this button, let the air out. They put these pressure gauges on each side of this filter. You can tell if it's restricting, if the, the pressure is too far different. High quality water is important for cows. Our bacteria counts weren't crazy high, but it was enough to justify putting a light in there just to take care of any issues. For those of you who have been watching the channel for a couple years, remember we drilled a new well the whole way down towards the corner of the property down there and ran a water line the whole way up to the barn. That was a decision we were very happy with. It was a pain and it cost a decent amount of money, but having reliable water like that's been a game changer uh, we have a well right there that's the one that's 10 gallons a minute it's not the best we do have a third well that's a good well towards the other side of the farm that's for the old barn and the houses we used to have to steal water from that one just to keep this barn going but now we're not doing that anymore and we have plenty of water so it's nice I'm gonna get this foot bath cleaned up. We wanna run that this afternoon again. We were running a product called Ultra 2-in-1 and it's on back order. We can't get more of it right now. So we're just gonna run straight from aldehyde today, the next three days to try and get rid of any hoof warts that we have on the cows. The cows are doing really well so far this summer for the most part. The heat gets to them, but keeping them pretty comfortable. We've had a couple more sore feet lately, so we gotta stay on top of the foot bath, make sure we don't have any heel warts or uh, strawberry warts, we call them, that can make them sore. Got the bath mixed up. Just put four gallons in with uh, all that water. It is the afternoon now and I'm gonna feed the cows. The silo's been working out really well for us. Just run it off the switch here. The only thing I wish we would have done is wired in a switch for the, the ring drive motor that makes the, the thing rotate up there. That way we could shut that off before we turn the main fan off. Every time we go to shut the unloader off, we're raising it up a little bit to let it clean out. We will have that all wired in with the robot automatically, but for right now, we just have to make sure we don't plug that unloader. If we shut it off before we raise it, we'll have a problem. See here, the door's not quite ready to switch. Could almost change it. We've switched the door, I think, four times now since we started feeding the silo. And my dad actually did it twice. I think I'll be the one climbing most of the time, but he uh, he was able to do it. 
start it up first and I will lower it down. They're running about 30 amps. So it'll stay level once it gets around the amps drop, then I'll just manually lower it a little bit more. Puts it out pretty fast, it doesn't take long. Just a couple minutes to get 740 pounds. Just gotta watch and then raise it up before we get to the number. We got the Triticale, put a little bit of mineral in. Now I'm gonna add the hay we chopped this morning. Put 500 pounds of this in and then we'll go up to 2100 total with the corn silage out of the bunkers. That'll be the dry cow mix. It's a little simpler than the milk and cow batch. And then we got some extra mineral grain that we add just for the pre-fresh cows. They'll get the last bit of the dry cow feed. There we got the mix, I'm ready to run it out now. Our mixer does have some knives on it, but we don't rely on those at all for processing. We like to have the forge and everything be the right length when we mix it, so that way it's consistent. We used to not chop our hay, and we would just load the hay or straw in first, let the mixer run full throttle, burn a bunch of fuel, and it still wouldn't chop it up very well. Then the cows would sort through it. That's it for the dry cow mix. I'm gonna feed the milk and cows next, but I think I'm gonna wrap the video up. Try to get finished up and get out of this heat. It is uh, brutal. All right, see you guys next week. Thanks for watching.